Hi, you're on Rescue TV with Pat Massetti. We're very excited to have you here to talk us through how to set and how to stay on track for goals and resolutions. Well, well thank you for having me today because one of the things that most people do is they kind of go, I'm not going to set them because I never achieve them. I you know, always struggle. And the key is to set them that they're sustainable and attainable. That's one of the most important parts of setting resolutions and goals in your life. So one of the things that often happens is you get to the end of the year, you get to New Year's Eve, you're a little bit pissed or hungover, <laughs> And you wake up and you say, okay, I'm going to make my plan for the year. It's probably the worst time of the year to worst do this, time. right? Worst time. So for, let's say, uh, resolution or goal-setting virgins, mm -hmm. what are some of your top expert tips for okay. setting and staying on track? But the first thing they got to do, the first thing you got to do is realise what can you control? What is it that I control? So again, set a goal, what can you control in it? Number two is have some accountability there. Most people don't achieve their goals because they've got no one to be accountable to or to hold them to account. For example, I say, oh, I'm not gonna drink as much. You know, drink so much, I'm not gonna drink as much. Okay, well, what are you going to drink and how much you're gonna drink and how are we gonna keep you accountable for that? Because if you don't have an accountability, so you're more than likely to achieve So give me an example of how to be accountable for the drinking goal. Having a example. friend, a loved one, a husband or wife, where they ask you the questions, how much did you drink today? How many coffees did you have? You normally have six. You said you were going to have three. How did you go? And allow them that opportunity to speak into your life because all, all of us left to ourselves, we're going to go like this. For example, if you're going to go to the gym, you're more than likely going to do better if you've got a trainer than if you don't have a trainer. You go to the gym, you want to socialize, you want to talk, and all of a sudden your hour's gone, oh, gee, the only thing I exercised was my tongue. You know. So having someone there, say at the gym, keeps you accountable. Having someone at home keeps you accountable. If it comes to bad habits, having someone to question you, having worked in drug rehabilitation, I found that one of the greatest strengths in rehabilitating young men was having them an accountability buddy that would ask them the hard questions. I think thirdly, when it comes to setting goals, ask yourself this question, what is it I really want to achieve? Because most people just go, oh, I don't want to quit. Or they go, I want to lose weight. That's too fuzzy. What do you want to achieve? I How want to be healthy. Okay. Absolutely. Fuzzy dreams don't come true. So if you're going to be healthy, you say, okay, I want to lose five kgs in the next four or five months. Don't do five kgs at the end of the month. You're never going to do it. Okay. Set yourself a long-term goal, which is achievable and sustainable. So let me ask you, when we're talking about resolutions and goal setting, are you a believer or do you recommend that um, we write these down? Do you do you work with vision mm -hmm. boards? Because there's so many different ways. And I guess um, as an expert mm. in, in guiding people and coaching people in, mm. to achieve their goals, what are some of the tips that you advise us to on how to set them, revise them? That's a great point. And I'll tell you why. Because what we surround ourselves with gets inside of us. Okay. What you put in front of you gets inside of you. So have a vision board. Have a picture. Have a picture of someone there that looks trim and healthy. And then have stick a, it to the bridge. Stick it out. And then have a picture of someone there that looks the Michelin man, you know, and so that you've got the pain and you've got the profit in it. Because I think sometimes in goal setting, what we forget is that there's got to be a bit of a payback for you, a bit of a reward. Mm -hmm. And along the journey, let's just say whether it's health or savings or in your relationship, because most of our goals fall into four areas, time, relationships, health and money. Ask yourself, okay, what am I going to do when I achieve half my goal? How am I going to reward myself? Okay. And that's very important because it keeps something in front of you, mm. something to aim at. And let me ask you one other thing. Um, one of the things that with goal setting is what happens when you fall off track? You get back on. At any time? At any time. You mustn't do that. See, what people do, and many of you out there, you quit. You start, you quit. But you should think, wow, look how far I've come. So you say, yeah, but I only went to the gym twice. That's awesome. You went twice. Twice more than you didn't. Exactly. Yeah. And most people, because our propensity as human beings is to go negative, mm -hmm. is we've got to look at the upside. What have I achieved? What have I done? Okay, so you didn't save 10000 this year, but boy, you saved five. What a fantastic thing. Well, I didn't lose my 10 kgs. I, I lost two. That's awesome. Look at what you're achieving because... The motivation to achieve doesn't happen by negativity. It happens by inspiration. Yeah. And if you look at, you know, I often say to people, look, thank God, or maybe you're not where you are, but thank God you're not where you used to be. I like that. Well, thank God we are where we are. Absolutely. Absolutely wonderful to speak to you. We are going to use these tips as we go into 2014 and beyond. Well, thanks so much for having us on the program and you achieve those goals. <laughs>